It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Kyle Walker, who's the online voice of the Mid American Nazarene Pioneers. Kyle, the Pioneers are rolling through this season, and you know, eight no record, four and zero in Hart South play. Uh, it's it's been a season to remember for sure. But but talk about your take on the year so far. I, it has been an incredible season for the Pioneers. Uh, certainly not one that I saw coming in. Although they actually had a great season last year. Uh, it definitely has caught me by surprise, this being my eighth season calling Pioneer football or having the privilege to call Pioneer football. This is definitely one of the best teams I've seen step onto the field. And uh, this 8-0 record, again, was far beyond my expectations. Maybe not that of the team. They maybe knew this was coming the entire time, but I have certainly been pleasantly surprised by their success. You know what I, I I would imagine if you ask Coach Hanson, he he's he might have seen it coming. I I know that it's been something he's been building toward, and the the program itself. Saturday's game though was a big one, and it was one that I, many people were talking about. The the weekend as a whole was going to be a big weekend. This game was going to be one to watch, and the game did not disappoint. Yeah, I I do believe that this did earn the the term instant classic. Yes, uh, because this game was it was competitive, it was exciting, and it was all of that for the entire sixty minutes of action. And I mean, taking it all the way down to all zeros in the fourth quarter, never a dull moment. Never did either side, you know, get ahead or appear to be out of it. This was sixty minutes of nothing but highly competitive football. And I again, in eight years the most exciting game I have had the pleasure to call at Mid-American Nazarene University. Yeah, and, and I thought last year's Benedictine game was was a, a big-time game. This one up the ante, it really did. Uh, you mentioned, Kyle, the fact that, that neither team really pulled away throughout the game. I mean, back and forth, you know, seven points here, three points here, four points here, back and forth. You get to the fourth quarter, though, and about midway through, Mid-America retakes the lead. Yes. And then the onside kick uh, to be able to get the ball back and then move up by 10. Talk about that point in the game right there because that was a really gutsy call. Well, and honestly, uh, it wasn't an intentional call, I don't believe. They did not set up for an onside kick. What, what happened in the fourth quarter? m &U was kicking into a very stiff breeze, and rain and wind were picking up. So this was really more of a chip shot. Get it into the air. Let the wind do with it what it will. And what I saw from my booth was one of the return men for Benedictine went up to block and left a very open area where the ball just dropped after maybe a 35-yard kick. So it was in this, this giant area. The return man was desperately trying to run up on it. And then all the Pioneer special teams were collapsing on the ball that was allowed to hit. It didn't go out of bounds. But I would venture a guess, and Coach Hansen could tell me I'm wrong, that this was not a designed onside kick. This was a fortunate turn of events in an insanely tight game that just went in the Pioneers' favor. And and sometimes that's what it takes, too. Yes. You mentioned the weather. Talk about the weather a little bit, too, because it was it was a factor throughout. It really was. So our stadium, the Olathe District Activity Complex, is set up that any kind of a stiff breeze really whistles through the complex. <laughs> All right, you can see the flags moving on every play if there's a breeze out there. And so it is always a big determining factor on which way you want to go, you know, first quarter and fourth quarter, second quarter and third quarter. And so that that is a determining factor on a coin toss, because when that wind is really whipping, you have times where it's behind you and it will help your passing game immensely or it's dead in front of you and your kicking game can be thrown off. Your passing game can be thrown off. And it was it was perfect football weather. It was rainy. It was windy. It was cool. It was everything that you would want for an early November football game back and forth throughout the entire game and it looked like it was going to be one of those things uh, situations where the team who had the ball last would be the team that won it mid-american nazarene do you think that they're having the ball last they come down score 19 seconds left and maybe that's the last time that uh, a score will be put on the board it looks like everything's going the Pioneers' direction. But wait, there's more because this is an instant classic. And the Ravens take the, the return back and get the score. Coach Osborne, a very gutsy call on his part as well to, to try to go for the win. And you know what? On the road, I, I mean, I agree with that. As a coach before, I've done that. And, and, and 
you, you go for the win when you're on the road, maybe a little more conservative at home, but when you're out there, Coach Osborne went for two. Talk about the, the final seconds following Mid American Nazarene taking the lead. Sure, that last touchdown, I will admit, I was I was a bad broadcaster and <laughs> I thought it was done. I thought this game was over. That was the the final piece that the Pioneers would need to hold on and win. But as you said, but wait, there's more. The return just over pursued by the special teams. And then uh, I believe his name was Jay Sean Todd, the return man for Benedictine, who had been a problem all day, scoops it up after mishandling the kickoff return, mishandled it, picked it up, took it all the way back. So then, yeah, we're, we're staring at a two point conversion to win the game. If you're a Benedictine fan or a gigantic hold for the Pioneers defense, I don't fault their coach at all. Absolutely. You go for the win in that situation. But I don't think anyone in the booth had any fingernails left by the time that play had finished up because we were nervous wrecks after that return. They get a great return. All credit where credit is due. It was wonderful and left a lot of jaws on the floor up in that broadcast booth. I think, and, and again, this is my opinion. Nobody in Kansas City asks my opinion. But <laughs> if they did, I think the Benedictine definitely still a playoff team yes. if – you know, things don't work out with the conference standings, and there's still two weeks to go on all of that. And we may, may talk about that here just a little bit later on. We're visiting with Kyle Walker here on Midwest Sports Net, talking on the summit today. And I encourage you, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that. We would appreciate that. Uh, we we know nothing about what it does for the, us algorithmically for YouTube. But it is pretty cool, so we would appreciate it if you please subscribe to the channel. Kyle, uh, Adrian Parsons, for his part, has had a stellar career, but another National Player of the Week honor, according to the NAIA. And, you know, this is the second time it's happened after the Benedictine game as well. Through yep. five touchdown passes, 26 for 40 passing, 376 yards on the day. What an effort in that weather. Yes. Yeah, Adrian Parsons, and I've been calling his games ever since he stepped on as a starter, and he gets better every year. Uh, there was a time previously where – Again, one guy's opinion, it felt like if things didn't develop, he tucked and run. He would just he would get out of there and take off. He's really developed into a confident passer who has no problem staying in the pocket, letting the play develop, and then hitting hitting his men all over the field. He spread that ball around. He was putting it where it needed to be. I even said on the broadcast, the middle seemed to be open. And I, you know, whatever that looks like, you know, good scheme by the uh, Pioneers offense or just miss uh, miss spot by the Benedictine defense. When he would able, was able to zip that ball over the middle, he was coming up with big chunks in big moments. And Parsons, when you look at it, he hit at least six different receivers, uh, two receivers with multiple touchdowns, one receiver with just one. But he, he moved the ball all over the place. And, yes, into the wind. MNU's passing game was spot on, going against another team with a very potent offensive attack through the air. Yeah, and I, I, I want to make sure that we mention Jackson Dooley because he was another quarterback with five touchdown passes on the day through for more than 400 yards. And you mentioned the receivers. I mean, five of them, again, that number five showed up uh, prominently in this in this game. Five receivers on the two teams combined with at least 100 yards receiving and each one of them with at least one touchdown reception. Kyle, I, I want to go back to something that we talked about at the very beginning too because – in in watching this team, I've had the feeling this would be a year that that would might be a special year for Mid American Nazarene. Part of the reason is just watching the progression, and you, you get Parsons coming back, you get some of the 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 other players that that might have gone on coming back on a team that's been developing and getting better. On top of that, it was a team that, again, nobody in Kansas City asked my opinion on this, but I felt like was a playoff team worthy of, of getting a playoff spot last year at 9-2, and two, coming off the, the tri-championship in the Heart South as well. But it, it's had the makings to be a special year. Not over yet, but it's been pretty good. It has. Uh, it's it, Again, the best season I've seen the Pioneers have in my eight years of calling games. And, yeah, I think a lot of it is – they have veteran leadership. They have a coach with a great system. The players trust him. He trusts them. Everyone does their jobs. Very few mental mistakes. And I think that comes big time with a seasoned team. Uh, it's not a lot of freshmen out there, not against, you know, high quality freshmen, but it's, it is a team of people. You know, every year when I walk into the first game, 
I'm looking at the roster up and down, you know, who are the new names? This year, there's not a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of returning players. A lot of people, I remember I called them last year. I remember I called them two seasons ago when they were the young guy getting started. So it speaks a lot to the veteran leadership and the coach knows how to use the pieces that he has. And that is just critical in this. He's not asking people to do things they're not good at. He's not asking things to do people they're uncomfortable with. Everyone knows their job and they do it well. Well, let's talk about the, the job that needs to be done for Mid-American Nazarene on Saturday coming up. Sure. You're taking on a very good Baker Wildcats team. The Wildcats 3-1 and one in Hart South play with a loss already to Benedictine early on in the season. And so there's a lot that could happen here. Last year, Baker got out to an early lead and really just took over from that yeah. point in time. And that is what set up the uh, the three-way tie at the top of the Hard South standings last year. I, I think it's something the Pioneers obviously remember and know that the, it, it, the work's not done yet by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to be in Olathe this year, but it's still – it is a very, very good Baker Wildcats team – at the helm there, Truman Jules guard, who is just a fantastic quarterback in his own right. Give us a little bit of a preview of what we might see on Saturday. Uh, another another potential instant classic. Uh, <laughs> add into the fact that this is a rivalry game. Uh, m and and Baker, they, they've been longtime rivals. And lately, over the last 10 years, Baker's owned this series. The Pioneers just two and eight over the last 10. And then, yes, they, they took it last year right on the chin. Uh, and, and got knocked out 40 to seven, I believe was final score at Baker. So there's a sense of redemption for the pioneers, but Baker's coming in, this term gets used a lot, but this could be their championship game. They have a chance to knock out their undefeated rivals, really ruffle up the entire playoff system. So Baker is going to come in with everything that they have and the pioneers must be ready to, to, to accept it. Like they're gonna have to take their best shot and the pioneers are gonna have to hang with them and fire back. And again, Baker, a team with not only the opportunity to, you know, as you said, mess up the playoffs a little bit and, and see how things work out. But this is a, a potential playoff team in its own right you know, as, as an as an at large bid. There are not enough at large bids to go around to, to satisfy the, the needs of the of the heart south <laughs> by any stretch right. of the imagination. But it's, it's a, a very good game, potentially, on Saturday, a quality matchup, and it's going to be right there in Olathe. So, Kyle, really quickly, how can the people follow and listen to your broadcast of the game uh, along with uh, watching it as well? So what I would suggest to everyone, go to mnusports.com, and every, day you'll, or every game day, you'll see Game Day Central. You can track the stats. You can click the live broadcast. And then the Pioneer Sports Network is available on YouTube, so you can watch the game, you can hear me call it, or you come out to the Olathe District Activity Center, you buy a ticket, you sit down and watch the game yourself, and spare yourself from having to listen to me for three hours. <laughs> it's not a bad listen, Kyle. I've, I've, <laughs> I've heard the broadcasts, I promise. It's not a bad Appreciate listen. Uh, we're looking forward, by the way, uh, Midwest Sports Net. Uh, the plan this year was to be in Olathe, and obviously with, uh, with some situations back here at home, uh, didn't quite work out for that. So the plan next year is to be in Olathe, and it's going to be in a different setting next year as well, correct? Yes, yes it is. Uh, to my understanding, and I'm not privy to all the information, but we will uh, bid adieu to the Olathe District Activity Center, or ODAC, as you'll hear it called, and we will be on campus next year. Our new stadium is well under construction. Uh, it's it's going to be beautiful and home games on home field, home soil, shall we say. I, I am so excited. As someone who did graduate from MNU many years ago, uh, I, it just thrills me to walk on campus to be able to, to call these football games next season. All right. Well, we look forward to following along on Saturday again. Baker at Mid-American Nazarene this Saturday. Kyle told you how that you can follow along in one way or another. If you're not out there in Olathe and one more game there at the ODAC for sure. So thank you very much, Kyle Walker, the online voice for the Mid-American Nazarene Pioneers. It's been a great season and MNU would like to continue along that path as it goes on. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today here on the Summit. You bet. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it.